If there are two things I love in life, it's food and sports. I'm Wes Bryant, a born and bred North Carolina kid, and I'm going to take you on a journey to some of the best spots in Charlotte to get your grub on with some of the best and brightest athletes and personalities. Back in the day, I had plenty of games. And now I'm here to show you that Wes got range. The improper pig is not to run of the mill barbecue place. Now sure, we could go in here and get a pulled pork sandwich. We could get St. Louis style ribs. But this place chooses to take a walk on the wild side. Low main, Korean barbecue, salmon, southern egg rolls are just some of the international flair that this place puts into traditional barbecue dishes. I haven't eaten all day. I don't know about you guys. Let's go in here and uh, eat it up. Quickest gun in Charlotte right here, Chef Carlos, AKA Speedy. What are we making today? Today, we're gonna make a lo mein chicken. So I'm gonna show you how to do the lo mein chicken. That sounds fantastic. Like I said, I haven't eaten all day. Let's get to it, Chef. All right. Let's steam it. Now what's right. next after that? After that, we're gonna grill our vegetables. This is a uh, cabbage, carrots, scallions, and uh, yellow onions. Now we gotta warm our wok with some of the uh, soybean oil. Yep. We gotta make sure it's really hot so that way the veggies don't, don't uh, stick on the bottom. Okay. So, yeah, you guys gotta make sure this wok is really hot. What was that? That was our fresh garlic. We gotta make sure we we uh, saute the garlic first. The veggies in it. Fried up, chef. Fried up, baby. Yeah. Some fresh in there. Yeah. This. Wow. Put some chicken in it. Next. Next. Uh, this is our uh, Asian sauce, Asian mama sauce. sauce we just got it in Charlotte. Watch the work. Watch the work. Yeah. All right. We've got a, next step. We gotta put the pasta in it. All right. Then we go back to the wok. And then we mix it real good with the sauce and the veggies. I would have to eat constantly back here. I would lose so much weight. It's so hot in here. I'm just sweating. You see the hard work, dedication? Oh, yeah. This is me to get fancy, y'all. This is me to get fancy. Yeah. <laughs> right then, and it's ready. Let's taste this delicious lo mein finish here. Mmm. This is delicious. Speedy. I see why you get the reputation you have. Fresh flavor here. The cabbage is crispy. You can taste that smoke from the chicken. And then the noodles have so much flavor. This is fantastic. Great job, my Thank you, man. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> here we go at the Improper Pig. It's March Man. It's got my man Nate Wimberly, who is everything <laughs> at WBTV Sports Producer, reporter. Yep. He does everything for sales of popcorn at the Hornets games. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I do that too. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> we got a nice spread here. We got Gavin, the GM at the Improper Pig, here to tell us what we got. What are we dealing with? All right, right here, I'll, I'll go on this side first. We've got our pork sandwich. We uh, smoke that pork for about 14 hours every day. So it comes out nice and tender, good bark on it and everything. Here we've got our southern egg roll. It's stuffed with um, our uh, sweet potato hash as well as our collard greens. And then you got a nice uh, wasabi aioli on the side there. Up here we've got our jalapeno cheese grits, really cheesy, creamy grit with some jalapenos for a black pepper flavor. And my favorite is probably the, uh, my, this is my every Tuesday meal. Okay. It's the uh, it's our smoked wings. Brian those for about 10 to 12 hours. Uh -huh. We smoke them for four. Right now it's got the spicy hoisin and the queen bee sauce mixed in there. Serve it with some blue cheese, it's an awesome combo. And then over here I just threw in a couple of our uh, cornbread muffins. They've got some, a little bit of jalapenos, a little bit of cheese in there too. Is yeah. this sauce inspired by Little Kim? She is the queen bee. <laughs> maybe a little bit of Charlotte, maybe a little bit of Little Kim. Oh, right. oh wow. Cheers, okay. guys. Enjoy it. All right, Nate. Now, you came out of Macon, Georgia. Yep. 
What inspired you to get into sports media and did you ever think you would get as far as you are today? Uh, yes, I did. I would get as far as okay. I did today. You got to be positive. You got to be confident about yourself and what you're doing. So, yes, I was. Um, I was that kid in high school that uh, brought the sports page to, to, to the school every day. So, I knew I wanted to do something with sports. Now, I played high school football, but this ain't gonna cut it in uh, college. So uh, that ended. So I went to Georgia Southern, uh, got my broadcasting degree, and you know, here I am. Okay, so it's March Madness, yeah. college basketball season. What's your method for picking your bracket? Everybody has their thing. They might throw a pencil up in the sky, whichever color falls, or the colors of the team, or different things like that. How does Nate Wimberly, sports extraordinaire, Pick his it's hard. I mean, you got 68 teams and a lot, so of, teams, many. And a so lot of teams many. you've never heard of. Yeah. You know, Cal State, Bakersfield. Yeah. Yeah. Never seen. Never seen. No, no, don't know anybody on the team. Don't even know the coach. So, you know, you do some quick research. Uh, what I do is I look at like the last 10 games. Okay. And, and you know, how are they playing going into the tournament? Do they have good guard play? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, will tell me a lot about a team. You know, it's guard play, guard play, guard play, and coaching. Um, but, you know, that's how I look at it and, and do a little research and then I pick. See, what I do, I've won a couple of bracket pools in my day. So what I do is, I like you though. I Somebody like, need to throw you in the pool. <laughs> like I do is, I like to go on, I look at research, I look at who you beat, who you lost to, how bad did you lose to them. Yeah. That's the only thing you can do. Like you said, there's a thousand teams. Yeah. So I try to go in there and I make an educated guess. Yeah. No more than that. I don't think if you watch every team every night, you can still, still make a good, solid bracket. Yeah. It's just, I don't think anybody will ever think a perfect bracket in our life. And that's one of the things, it's safe to say, I don't think that will ever happen. Unless you're like Dustin Hall. I Rain think, Man yeah, I something. think somebody will do it. One. Somebody. Okay. Somebody will do it. One. Now looking at this tournament, no Ben Simmons. <laughs> you got, you know, wow. Brandon Ingram out there. But what a career that was at LSU. <laughs> yeah. but Maybe you shouldn't have picked LSU. <laughs> But the Hornets won't be picking that high. No. But who's a guy, because the Hornets are playing some good basketball right now, who's a guy that you think, regardless of the pick, we'll just, just go on fantasy land here. Who's a guy you think that could help the Hornets the most that we'll see in this tournament? I, that's a good question. I don't know because I don't know who's going to, you don't know who's coming out or right. anything like that. I, you know, I can tell you uh, a position need or okay. a need that they, that, a, a player that they, they just need more three-point shooting. You can never have enough of that. And right now, they're playing well because they went from the worst three-point shooting team last year to one of the best three-point shooting teams this year. So they have to continue to improve their shooting from the three-point line, and whether it be a stretch for I really don't think they need any more people. I think that they're good there, depending on what happens with Al Jefferson in the offseason as he's should be a free agent. You still, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with Nick Batum. So uh, you got to continue to be a three-point shooting team because the Golden State Warriors proved, you know, you got a bunch of shooters. Now where they you pick, the from where they pick now, they'll probably be in the 20s. Maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, a guy like Grayson Allen or no. Michael Brogdon. Okay, no. but we know strongly against that. No, no, Michael no, Brogdon, no, 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 no. something. I like Brogdon, yes. Yeah. Brogdon, yes. Um, Grayson Allen, I think Grayson Allen needs to go back again. I mean, you know, if they tell him he's a lottery pick, I mean, if they tell you a lottery pick, he got it. I mean, so, you know, it depends on what they tell him, but if, if, he's, not a, if he's not a lottery pick, Grayson Allen should go back. Okay. I mean, college basketball needs some juniors and some seniors. Right. Instead of all these freshmen, I mean, it's hurting. I mean, I think this is why we have the project that we got this year where you've got six teams who are number one this year. I mean, that's the most ever since, you know, the early 80s. So, I mean, you need some senior guys and some junior guys, guys who play, you know, to, to boost up this product because coming into this tournament, who's fair? Yeah. Enough with the basketball talk. We got this marvelous fool right here. Yeah. It's about to be some carnage. Let's <laughs> eat it up. Ah! <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh. It's spicy. Poison? poison? Jalapeno. 
these jalapeno cheese grits. I definitely want to try these. Oh, these are good. It's good flavor, man. Well, you guys see once again the carnage that has been done at the table. We had a little bit of help. We didn't eat it all, but we still did. I think you see my man got the toothpick in there. Yeah, man. Final four <laughs> picks. I'm gonna put the pressure on you. You started off. Who you got? Ain't no pressure. Yeah, man. I got Miami, Oklahoma, wow. West Virginia, and Virginia. The Kings. Yes, yes. They're gonna pull it together. I mean, they're. What do you like about my? That mean the, the guard play. Okay, guard play. Like Clarendon and Rodriguez. Guard good. play and coaching. Jim Laranega. He's a good coach. George Mason took the final George four. Mason. You know, I think they'll get it together. I mean, they're they're you know they're hit or miss. Okay. I mean, but who is a hit or miss this year? Okay. So I mean, you, you can go out on a limb this year and, and not be penalized too much because you really don't know what's going to happen. He'll probably roll his eyes at my picks. Oh boy. I didn't go four one. Okay. But I went Carolina. Oklahoma, Kansas, Michigan State. Man, that's Okay, that's okay, but well, wait a minute. That's not Chunk. Oh, Michigan State. No, no, no. Oh, I chose, no, I have some rhyme and reason, okay? Michigan State, to me, they've been a team that's been fairly consistent all year. They've had some injuries. Valentine, those guys have gotten hurt, but I think they'll be ready for a tournament run. Most years, they do kind of choke. Kansas. I like them because, the, once again, they've been a team all year. The big game that, that they played, they've won. They've been a team that's been around all year. They stayed at or near the, I mean, they stayed in that top five all year long. So I think it's their year, and that's why they're my championship pick. And I'm not a guy who, I think Kansas is a perennial choke. You think but Kansas this year, I went Kansas, Carolina in the title game. Kansas is going to lose to California. Okay. Well, hey. We got now. Who do you have Oklahoma, as your champion? Oklahoma, Virginia to meet the national championship game. Virginia to win the national. Championship. So you and see, Virginia is a team I've had them the last couple of years in my Final Four, and they they don't make it. Michigan State beat them. Yeah, so they they worry. But, but guess I what? Like them but a guess lot. what? This year, Virginia is gonna beat Michigan State. But see that that, that Carolina game? That's scary because I'm just like typical Virginia. When they get to that moment, that moment. They don't quite you get over the top. This season, you can't take one game and, and, and make your decisions off of that because okay. everything is so right. 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 Don't, right. Don't, don't, don't use that rationale. Right. Don't use that rationale. Right. It's been so unpredictable this year that you can't just use, oh, well, they look bad against Carolina. Well, not just one Car game. Carolina looked bad against no, Northern Iowa. No, no, no. It's but not look just, at this. It's not just one game. Oh. I'm saying the fact that when they, I just don't trust them in a big okay. spot right I feel now. You. I feel That's you. the thing. So, hey, if you want to go against my picks, Nate picks, yep. we got the West Guy range. We got the free and the paid <laughs> bracket challenge on I don't ESPN. Know what that means, dog. Yeah, we got the free and the paid. If you want to press your luck a little bit, we got the free challenge on ESPN. Group name West Guy range. You go on there and test your picks out and see if your Final Four can come out better than ours. More great eating, another great restaurant in the books. Will, you see my shirt picking, poking out, is it poking out? Listen, all that great food, come down here to the Cotswold Shopping Center, check out the Improper Pig. Shout out to my man, Nate Wembley, WBTV Sports, coming and hanging out with us. It's March Madness, come check out the Tournament Challenge. West Guy Range free, West Guy Range paid. See how your picks stack up. Come join us next time, but we're gonna talk more sports. We're gonna eat more food, and we're gonna laugh and talk noise even more here on West Guy Range. And as always, eat it up.